boasts as anatomical structures, provide rigid framework to withstand mechanical load, serve as levers for locomotor function of muscles, and avoid protection for a vulnerable fistula. Bones as a physiological organ contains hemopoietic tissue and it also serves as an organ of reservoir for calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and sodium. Osteoblasts also govern metabolism in response to various stimuli, biochemical, mechanical, electrical, and magnetic. There are three primary germ cell layers. These include ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. The mesoderm forms mesenchyme, a diffuse cellular tissue that is pluripotent and may differentiate into many connective tissues such as bone, cartilage, ligament, muscle, tendon, and fascia. During the fifth week of embryonic development, the limb buds appear. Covered by ectoderm in the central axis, the mesenchymal cells condense into a short cylinder. The cylinder is segmented by less dense cellular areas, and this represents future joints. By the sixth embryonic week, the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells of each model begin to differentiate by manufacturing cartilage matrix and thereby forming a cartilaginous model of the future bone. After the seventh week of embryogenesis, hypertrophy of the cartilage cells occurs. This results in the calcification of the matrix. The vascular connective tissue then grows into the central area of that cartilage, bringing osteoblasts that secret collagen and proteoglycans into the matrix. The matrix is then impregnated with calcium salts, thereby forming the primary center of ossification. This process of replacement of cartilage by bone is called endochondral ossification. The perichondrium has by this time become periosteum, and in its deeper layer, the mesenchymal cells which have differentiated into osteoblast, lay down bone directly by the process of intramembranous ossification, there being no intermediate cartilaginous phase. Short bones, for example carpal bones, are developed by endochondral ossification. Meanwhile, flat bones, for example clavicle and skulls, are developed by intramembranous ossification. Bones grow in length by endochondral ossification, whereas they grow in width by intramembranous ossification. Interstitial growth occurs in cartilage. The sides include articular and epiphyseal cartilage. The articular cartilage is the only growth site in the epiphysis. In short bone, this is the only place in which growth occurs. The epiphyseal plate provides growth in metaphysis and diaphysis of a long bone. Balance is maintained through interstitial growth of the cartilage and calcification. There are four zones of the epiphyseal plate. First, the zone of resting cartilage. This zone anchors the epiphyseal plate to the epiphysis and contains immature chondrocytes and blood vessels. The second is the zone of young proliferating cartilage. This is the most active site of interstitial growth of cartilage cells. The third is the zone of maturing cartilage. This zone reveals a progressive enlargement and maturation of cartilage cells. The fourth is the zone of calcifying cartilage. This zone contains dead chondrocytes and calcified matrix. Malnutrition is the most common cause of retardation of longitudinal bone growth. This is usually accompanied 
by disturbance of endocrine function. Hormones which affect bone growth include human growth hormone, thyroxin, sex hormones, and glucocorticoids. Bone increases in width by means of a positional growth from the osteoblast in the deep or inner layer of periosteum, the process being one of intramembranous ossification. Simultaneously, the medullary cavity becomes larger through osteoclastic resorption of bone on the inner surface of the cortex. During longitudinal growth, the metaphyseal region must be continually remodeled as the epiphysis moves farther away from the shaft. This is achieved by simultaneous osteoblastic deposition and osteoclastic resorption. During growing years, bone deposition exceeds bone resorption, resulting in positive bone balance. In the elderly, bone deposition cannot keep pace with bone resorption, which results in negative bone balance. In response to physical stress, bone is deposited in sites subjected to stress and resorbed from sites where there is little stress. The Wolf's Law is mediated by induced electrical potentials. Negative charge induces bone deposition, whereas positive charge induces bone resorption. Anatomical structures from their gross structure, bones are classified as long bones or tubular bones, for example femur, short bones or cuboidal bones, for example carpal bones, and flat bones, for example scapula. Each of these bones consists of dense cortical on the outside and sponge-like arrangement on the inside. In children, the covering periosteum is thick and loosely attached to the cortex and produce new bone readily. In contrast, in adults, the covering periosteum is thinner and more adherent to the cortex and produce new bone less readily. Blood supply to lung bones. Three distinct systems exist. Avrand vascular system comprised of nutrient and metaphyseal arteries. These supply the inner two-thirds of the cortex. And periosteal arteries. These supply the outer one-third. Afferent vascular system conveys venous blood. Intermediate vascular system is vascular system of capillaries within the cortex. The direction of blood flow normally is centrifugal from medullary cavity to periosteal surface. Histological structure From the viewpoint of its microscopic structure, bone is classified in the following way. Immature bone and major bone that consists of cortical bone and cantalous bone. Under normal condition, this bone is no longer to be seen. Nevertheless, under abnormal condition, for example fracture healing or tumor reaction, the immature bone can be seen, but subsequently replaced by major bone. This bone is very cellular and contain more proteoglycan, but less cement substance and mineral. Major bone this bone is characterized by the concentric arrangements of its lamellae and haversian systems or osteons. In cancellous bone, the arrangement of the lamellae is somewhat less complex because the trabeculae are thin. The bone turned over is greater in cancellous bone as it has eight times larger surfaces area than cortical bone. The major bone is less cellular 
and contains more cement substance and more mineral. The interstices of cancellous bone contain blood vessels, nerve fibers, fat, and hemopoietic tissue. However, the hemopoietic tissue is limited to the spine, shoulder, and pelvic girdle and adults. Bone cells and their function. Osteoblast is one type of differentiated mesenchymal cell, essential for osteogenesis or ossification, and then calcification. Osteoid is uncalcified tissue, whereas bone is calcified tissue. Osteoblast that surround itself with organic intercellular substance and lies in a lacuna is called osteocyte. Osteocytes receive their nutrition from tissue food derived from regional blood vessels, in horizontal Falkman's canals, and in longitudinal Haversian canals. Bone morphogenetic protein stimulate undifferentiated perivascular mesenchymal cells to differentiate into osteogenic cells. The transforming gout factor beta has the potential to enhance the healing of bone defect. Osteoclast lies on uncovered bone surface. They resorb and remove bone. It is believed that osteoclasts are derived from the fusion of many pluripotential stem cells, such as monocytes or macrophages. Calcium can only be removed from bone only by osteoclastic activity, which removes the organic matrix and the calcium simultaneously.